गुड इवनिंग डियर फ्रेंड्स अवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज रन टेस्ट ऑब्वियसली रन टेस्ट इज अप्लाइड टू वन सैम्पल एंड दैट्स वाई इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड वन सैम्पल रन टेस्ट इट इज अ काइंड ऑफ अ नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट एंड डन और अप्लाइड फॉर रेंडमनेस ऑफ अ डेटा वी नीड टू सी और मेजर रेंडमनेस ऑफ अ डेटा वेदर डेटा इज रेंडम और नॉट इट इज ऑल्सो वेरी बेसिक इट इज यूज टू डिटरमाइन वेदर द ऑर्डर और सीक्वेंस ऑफ द ऑब्जर्वेशन इन सैम्पल इज रेंडम और नॉट and that's why we infer it like we infer from sample to population so here also hypothesis are prepared so there are again two hypothesis obviously null and alternate so null hypothesis says that the observations in the sample are randomly generated whereas alternate states that the observation in the sample are not randomly generated basically there are two methods considering the runs test we need to see the size of sample if the sample is less than 20 we need to apply small sample runs test if the sample size is large or maybe greater than 20 we need to apply large sample runs test first we will see small samples runs test in simple terms n would be less than 20 now we will see it by using example so here the example states that there are 26 cola drinkers and they are randomly selected and there are two types of cola that are sold in a market the regular coke and a diet coke and when we have con- uh, collected the sample we got 18 of the cola drinker that drinks regular coke and 8 of the cola drinkers drinks diet coke now basically this is important information but we need to see the sequence of the sample that has been collected and we need to see whether that flows are random or not random order or not so just see here uh, in question only you would be given this kind of pattern where d represents diet coke and c represents a regular coke so this way the data has been given so let's see the solution of the sum so obviously it follows hypothesis testing so h tab would be followed and that's why the first step is our hypothesis so the hypothesis or maybe the null hypothesis would be the observation in the samples were generated randomly our alternate would state that observations would not be generated randomly the step 2 is very simple we need to just write down n1 and n2 just give the notification so n1 represents regular coke which has the number 18 our n2 is representing diet coke which has number 8 step 3 is very easy again it gives a alpha value that was 0.05 that is 5% confidence interval but obviously it is for one tail but if we just convert it into two tail ha huh, it is divided by 2 and that is point 0.025 now we need to see table a11 and a12 so let's see table a11 first so see here my n1 is 18 so you have to see n1 18 and n2 is 8 so n2 is 8 when you just see this it gives me a number 7 same way we need to see a12 our n1 is again 18 and n2 is 8 when again we just see it will give me number 17 so i will just write here 7 and 17 it is my critical value which i have received from table now step 4 is to calculate run sequence so to calculate the runs we need to see the question again so see here d is one run the pair of c that is making again one run so we need to just differentiate every pair of group of c and d and that is a kind of coke maybe diet coke and regular coke and that makes our run so we just have to calculate 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so these are the 12 different patterns that has made a 12 different runs now our step 5 is very simple we need to see whether our r that is runs 
are in the range of this both that we have seen in our table so table a11 has given me 7 and table a12 has given me 17 by seeing the uh, n1 and n2 so yes my r is 12 which is lying between this both it is belonging to this both and that's why my null hypothesis is failed to reject i can say that yes i would like to go that the sequence the pattern which has derived that is randomly occurred and that's why the sample is representing ran randomly or randomness that represents the population also would be randomly selected now if our n is greater than 20 we need to apply large sample runs test so here there is one kind of presumble or you can say we presume that maybe if sample size increase it goes with normality or approx to normality so remember if your uh, size of n is greater than 20 maybe n1 or n2 you have to apply a large sample runs test here you can find out the mean and standard deviation with the formula and that's why you need to remember the formula of mean and standard deviation so obviously the formula for mean is 2 into n1 into n2 divide it by n1 plus n2 and then add it plus 1 the same formula is there is same for standard deviation that is under root 2 into n1 n2 bracket 2 into n1 into n2 minus n1 minus n2 whole divided by n1 plus n2 square bracket n1 plus n2 minus 1 now we will move to z test so obviously our z formula was like this way x minus mu upon standard deviation the same we have converted for runs test that makes r minus mu of r upon standard deviation of r let's see one example again so a machine producer parts that are occasionally flawed when a machine is working in adjustment flaws still occur but seems to happen randomly a quality control person randomly selects 50 observation of the parts produced by machine today and examines them one at a time in the order that they were made the result was 40 parts see your n1 is 40 with no flaws and 10 parts with flaws flaw means error so 40 parts were error free and 10 parts were having some error using alpha 0.05 or 5 percent the quality controller wants to determine whether the data is random or not whether the data was random or not so the data was given here see here n and n represents the data was not having any flaw f represents the flaw so obviously first step is to hypothesize it so here our null hypothesis would be same that we always apply that is we just want to see the data is random or not so the observation in the sample were generated randomly whereas alternate would say the sample were not generated randomly the second step is very simple we need to find out test statistics so first basically to apply test statistics or z test we need to find mean so formula was very simple 2 into n1 plus uh, n1 into n2 divided by n1 plus n2 and plus 1 so always don't make any mistake first solve this part and then this okay so 2 into 40 into 10 plus 40 plus 10 uh, plus 1 so you will get here 16 plus 1 that is 70 then we need to find out standard deviation of r so under root 2 n1 n2 bracket 2 n1 n2 minus n1 minus n2 whole divided by n1 plus n2 square bracket n1 plus n2 minus 1 so when you just apply all the numbers you will get 2.213 now third step is very simple our alpha value was given 0.5 so it is 5 percent so divide it by 2 so it would be 0.025 and when you just see the critical values of it so our alpha would be 0 0.25 025 
and uh, we need to remember this critical value so for 5% alpha whether we go for two tail the value would be 1.96 the next important thing we need to calculate for runs obviously we have calculated uh, runs in last uh, sum only uh, we will see in uh, so we need to calculate the runs so we know how to calculate the runs so obviously this 3n would make first run f would make second run and so on so here you would have 13 runs then the most important step we need to apply z test so obviously run was 13 mean was 17 divided by standard deviation that was 2.213 I got the answer that is negative 1.81 the last step is to compare critical value with calculated value so obviously our critical value was plus or minus 1.96 now we got the value that was minus 1.81 many times no we just follow the rule of number line but in this case don't follow it you just have negative value just plus it and compare it so obviously 1.96 and 1.81 obviously 1.81 is within your range and you need uh, you need to uh, state that we do not reject the null hypothesis and we consider that machine flaws are randomly noticed it's it was not uh, intentionally noticed so that is our conclusion so uh, runs test is always uh, seeing the randomness of a data whatever the samples we select that samples are randomly selected or not so here you need to remember whether your n is less than 20 or greater than 20 if less than 20 then there is a help of table a11 and a12 and you can solve it easily and if n is greater than 20 then also don't worry you just need to remember the small formulas which we have seen in a video and you need to apply it and to find out whether the uh, data follows randomness or not and you need to remember if the critical value is 0.5 you need to just apply two tail your value would be 1.96 so always remember the table value or critical value for 0.5 would remain same 1.96 and we need to just consider it. So thank you dear students. Have a nice day.